Do you like juice? Juice Galaxy is a fucking wild Just game. I'm... Oh, okay. Just leave then. That's fine. So yeah, Juice Galaxy is this game. This is a fucking nightmare, dude. It was like made of metal. God, it's terrifying. So yeah, basically you can fly and you're this little jelly dude. And uh, I have a mace now. And I'm gonna punch. Uh, just let me beat him. I must beat the other child. So yeah, this has got a combat system. <laughs> and it's also based around the fact that you're a wacky, flaily juice man. The juice store. So yeah, this is a juice store. You feed it juice. All those magical little dots I'm collecting, those are juice. I'm just vomiting some juice into this terrifying mouth. Class for your punishment. Student. Oh no, I lost my mace. Ever. So yeah, this game is like a, a fever dream that just keeps giving. Some kind of weird bastard in inspiration from uh, old school RuneScape or some shit, because it's got like the wilderness and graveyards and rune longswords and that. And it's also just bizarre. Like, someone came up with this, and it's brilliant. Move poning noobs in the wilderness. So you can talk to most of these people, but you can also hit them, and this guy just gets really tall. And he's terrifying, and I'm not- I, I don't like him. But also, we can become a vampire. And I only found out that this is what actually causes being a vampire earlier when I was playing it. You take the good juice, you quaff the good juice, get all that good juicy goodness inside you, and then you wait. And very soon, here he comes! Those horrifying noises are the juice vampire. There he is! He's a nightmare! I didn't know what caused him the first time I played this, and it just came out of nowhere and was kind of terrifying. But basically, he steals all your juice. And makes horrifying noises. I don't like this juice vampire. Please never say that to me again. So, what he just did there, now I'm using my shovel, is give me the ability to slurp. I can now slurp up all of my enemies in whatever way you want to believe that. Like, supping up some bones or supping up some polywogs. Ooh, and a free mask. That's terrifying as well. So yeah, you gotta kinda zoom around with your funky jelly dude as you swangle and swangle your quality shovel and bounce your head off the tarmac. So there's three beasts, as it were, that we need to kill. First of all, that nightmare snake creature from the beginning. Then, well, no, she's the second boss. First we have to kill God, literally. We have to kill God. He's the first boss, which says something about the way this game is gonna go. And yeah, you just kind of fly off into the wilderness, follow the paths, and find weird spooky stuff. This game's so unsettling. Like, something about the ambience, like, weird spooky ambience. This would be a amazing horror game. Like, why was there just a box of corpses? This isn't a good thing to have. It makes everyone look bad. If you're gonna keep your corpses, at least bury them. I have a shovel. I'm sending them all back to hell. And I'm also slurping them. <laughs> Oh yeah, this game is kind of amazing. In many, many ways. Like, look, no other game allows you to be a little wobbly jelly dude, painted in psychedelic colours, gyrating vigorously through a nightmare landscape. So also, there is a fairly deep level up system and all that too, which I can't say I was expecting. And this allows you to zoom further and hit things harder. As it is, the combat is uh, based around the fact that you can flail your weapon like an absolute moron and hope that you hit your enemies. This this is a terrifying creation, and I believe is a giant dinosaur with a massive blade through it. So these giants are kind of the only real way you have of navigating. There's this one, and there's a weird spindly robot dude. Uh, spindly robot dude has got a cabin next to him, and that cabin contains God. I just want you to enjoy that ASMR there as he struts his stuff like no one else ever has before. And we return to the font of all juice, the juice fountain. There is only juice. This is Siny. He's a nightmare that just keeps telling me things. And this terrifying creation is where the game becomes yet more of this 
unending nightmare. This is the cabin. This cabin is the home of the final boss and also the first boss. God. And this is where the game really starts to get even more bizarre, surreal, and utterly terrifying. This is also where the enemies start to get really quite tough, and you want to start learning to avoid them, or learning how to actually use your weapons. Momentum is basically the ultimate weapon in this game. If you can swing your weapon at the right time, you get a huge powerful swing, you get loads of damage. However, if you mess up, you just go face first into the enemy and shred your health. That guy touched us and took off half our health, so this is quite a dangerous area too. What makes it potentially even worse is the fact that no matter where you go, you are surrounded by horrifying creations. Like, props to the creator for making such an absolute nightmare. I don't know how you did this, but I will say I'm very thankful you did. So what we're doing now is descending to hell to fight God. It's quite a ballsy move, I have to admit, but... It's probably for the best. So, God does aggressive finger guns at us. As you can see, he's literally the creator. Uh, touching him does a lot of damage, and he's also got the most nightmarish voice, so we're just going to tag him in the dick with a rune longsword, and there we go. We just killed God. So, after killing God, our next job is to kill Snake God. And Snake God is just up. You just go straight up and you keep on going till you hit the edge of space and then you keep on going till you hit the edge of hell, uh, the second hell that is, sky hell, and then you keep on going until you hit the planets. And at this point you've reached a strange terrifying nirvana. There's the first planet. Notice how absolutely horrifying these shifting colours are as we ascend even higher into this skyscraping nightmare that is existence now. You actually need to take a uh, health upgrade though, because the first thing Snake God's gonna do... Prepare to die. So there's nothing you can do to avoid that. Oh, that usually works. You've been drinking the juice. We have not just been drinking the juice, we have become the juice. There is more than one way to correct problem behaviour. The only problem behaviour I see is your existence. So yeah, this is Mrs. Slivers. She's gonna try and stab us in the face. Um, you'll notice how heavy she hits. Uh, and she also summons a load of juicy skeletons. Or juicy alumni, as she calls them. My juicy alumni. And there we go. We've just killed a teacher. Look at that nightmare descending into our guts. So yeah, we're gonna vomit some more juice back into this door. So it's, it's a one-way door. It's a toll bridge of juice. But we also now have the Dragon Slayer. We are off to face the Clog. It does kind of feel like this game is somewhat inspired by um, Conker's Bad Fur Day or something. So now, because we've killed Snake God, friend Ingot is here. However, we can't talk to him with this sword because it just kills him whenever it touches him. This sword is completely overpowered and wipes the floor with everything. Back to the cabin to commit more terrible crimes and nightmares. As you can see, if this guy walks into the sword, he dies. So we're gonna suck his juice, pick up his plunger, and flush ourselves down the toilet. This is a power move to assert dominance over everything else. Uh, JK Rowling actually stole the idea for the teleports to the Ministry of Magic from this game. So now we're just gonna zoom on down to paradise and ignore the nightmare creatures that plague our existence. Because holy shit, there's a lot of them. And I do not like how shiny and fleshy they look. Jesus Christ, we got killed immediately. So this is the, uh, the hard part about this area. These creatures are, like, as you can see, level 123. Is, like, that's the highest one I've seen in this little trip. Uh, the enemies can spawn anywhere because of the water. There's actually some really, really good speedruns of this game. Like, it does lend itself really well to speedrunning because you can fly and there's no, like, real hard lined way of beating the game other than flushing yourself down that toilet. God, the textures just, they unsettle and they, they genuinely give me a headache. Inhale the juice, ingest the essence that you may become. Born again of their juice, become 
So after murdering some more innocent, terrifying creatures, we're back on our way and we're moving faster than ever thanks to the intense gallons of universal cosmic juice that I have consumed. Lord only knows what nightmares have yet to unfold. I believe there is a man of plungers, and I do not know what this means, but I do wish to kill. What is that clown face? I did not like that. Do not turn around, you nightmare creature. Just burn and die. Huh, another tourist. My god, it sounds like me when I'm trying to do a Kyber impression. Huh, another tourist enters this land of pipes. Go back up the pipe and never return. You are so no yeah, this is a nightmare claw. creature forged of man and plunger. This is the Super Mario Brothers wet dream creature. The claw punched off all my arms and legs and left me to die. I had them replaced with these tools of war. So this giant plunger that this man has granted us with his dying breath is the only weapon that can take on the clog. So we put away the Dragon Slayer and we instead take out this enormous plunger, which as it says, does one job and does it well. And that job is killing Sewer God. I don't like this unsettling, pulsating mass of flesh. Perverse creation, pale and flabby, as it emerges from deepest depths of psychedelic hell. The unreasonable clog is going to beat us to death with his weird hands. If you move too far away, he chases you. If you get too close, he moves away. And touching him does a lot of damage. And there's no one to suck juice from. So unfortunately, the only tactic is to fly at him and then spin around and try and hit him with the plunger. If this doesn't make like a uh, top 10 video game boss fights, then you know, what the hell? Or maybe at least top 10 anime betrayals. I don't know, is it a betrayal? This guy is betraying existence by existing. He shouldn't. Not only have we murdered God, Snake God, and now we've killed Sewer God. And we have unleashed something deep, dark, that was meant to remain hidden for all eternity. You have no idea what you've just unleashed. Finally, after all this time. I don't like this creature. Okay, the music's actually worth this. This music alone is my gift, killing the almighty clog sewer god. So yeah, this is basically the end of the game. Uh, we've killed every god and unleashed Swirly D, the dog devil. There's just one last thing I want to do in this game, and that is find those horrifying nightmare creatures from deep, deep in the wilderness. And here we are. We're currently at 105. This creature is some sort of crippling titan, and I do not like it at all. And this is what happens when those little waddledees from Kirby descend into a life of crime and crack. So, this was Juice Galaxy. It's a surreal, nightmare experience that I definitely recommend having a look at. I'll leave a link below. I don't know what else to say, it's absolutely brilliant and terrifying, and has awakened my eyes. That's about it. Thank you very much for watching, see you in the next video. FJB, out.